Hello, welcome to our tour of my modern vintage home office that we renovated. I'll give you a step-by-step -step around the things that we updated and the progression around our thought process. So certainly first and foremost, we repainted all the walls and put in new flooring. That's just the basics, crown molding as well. And just to give a nice starting point for the room, we wanted one interesting accent wall. And so that's this wood paneling here. I think we're reasonably happy with the paneling, although the adhesive that the, uh, is on the back is like a 3M style sticky adhesive and it doesn't always stick completely flat, but this would be easy to redo to put some stronger adhesive on. Uh, that was the only negative for these panels that we put up, but um, overall pretty happy with the, the look and feel for this. So for the room, we were going for a modern vintage feel, which is pretty tough to do. This is the one dark room in the house when you close all this up, especially with the furniture and the walls, everything is pretty dark. Uh, it's a mix of pieces I already had and pieces that were brand new to this space. So uh, the very first thing that I did was this lamp was repurposed. Um, it used to have like the paper uh, balls type and this lamp fell over a few times and after that happened the the paper shades did not last and so we were actually going to give this away but uh, i came up with the idea of trying to find these bulb cages i found them on amazon these uh, balloon or hot air balloon type cages with some edison lights and we have all the lights hooked up to Google. Okay, Google, turn on the lights. It didn't work. Okay, Google, turn on the lights. Maybe I manually turn this one off. technical difficulties. So this lamp was repurposed. We have a spotlight lamp in the corner that also got uh, renewed life with an Edison bulb. And then this one I bought, uh, I fell in love with a version of this from Pottery Barn. It's called the Baldwin lamp, but that one's $500. And I found a similar version on Walmart that is pretty good. Um, a little bit shorter, but this one was like $90. Um, the only thing I'd want to change is maybe spray painting this front side brass to make it a little bit brighter in terms of the look. But um, the lighting was the first thing that we got in the room set up. And then we went to the ceiling fan and put in this vintage style looking fan that is a hidden fan. Okay, Google, turn on the fan. So you can see that the blades start to retract. And so you don't have this presence of a ceiling fan in the room constantly when you're not using it, but um, you can have it appear out of the entire base, which is a pretty nice look. Okay, Google. Turn off the fan. Okay, Google, turn off the lights. So then the next major thing in the room was this chair that I got. This is an Eaton style, mid century, modern classic piece between this and the Negoshi table. Those are probably the two most famous mid century modern pieces. Uh, a real version of this is too expensive for me, but uh, I love the look uh, enough to find one of these replica versions that are substantially much cheaper, especially um, during these times when you don't know if uh, you're going to like the, the, the uh, 
comfort of the chair necessarily not being able to go into a store as easily um, starting off with a lower price might be the way to go this rug was repurposed i already had this rug um, but the next piece that we added in was this trunk this is on wheels and you'll see that it's offset from the wall a little bit and it could be uh, stored against the wall and then I roll it out with these little bumpers here to stop the wheels. And the whole point of that is to have a set distance away from the wall for a hidden projector that I keep in here. This is a 4K ultra short throw projector. And it will basically, when you're three, two and a half feet away from the wall, it'll fill up this entire wall. I'll do a separate video on the technology setup that I have in this room and show off the screen, but it's basically 150, 160 inches diagonally that it fills up across the entire wall. So you can have a little uh, movie watching or even conference call videos, and then it all tucks away when you don't need it. So we'll work our way around to this bookshelf. I originally had a pile of books that was stacked about this tall and uh, you can get about this high before it starts to wobble. And I was waiting for the day when I would actually accidentally knock it over and everything to tumble over. But I also was looking for a more dramatic look as well. So we, we bought this shelf that has a hidden spine and every nine inches or so there's a metal shelf inside and I hide the books in between and that way you can get easily six feet high with this type of shelf pick this up from overstock um, and then I probably want about a foot higher than you're supposed to just stacking some books for a little bit more dramatic feel and then took an extra wide book and created a little bit of a shelf on here. So there certainly is some visual tension. I tried to get it a little bit more narrow to make it feel a little more precarious. Um, I do have speakers throughout the room. So we have a DBLA Phantom in this corner. I picked up a very uh, vintage styled record player to finish this look. So I gotta pick up some more records other than the Beatles record that I have sitting here. But this is hooked up to Google Chromecast so that we have audio through the DBLA, audio play through here. This will play the right channel. And then I have another Bose speaker in this corner. This will play the left channel. So this furniture was just repurposed. I already had, same with this trunk. Since there's no closet in this room, that helps with some um, storage. I already had this rug. And so able to pull together pieces I already had and some new pieces as well. The last few parts are the desk and chair. I'm not completely happy with the chair. And so this will probably get swapped out um, with something nicer but it took forever for me to find a desk that had a modern vintage feel that was a price that i was willing to pay and the the biggest uh, factor was finding a standing desk that didn't look like a traditional standing desk and so there's one company out there called x desk that makes very nice, very heavy wooden desks that don't look like your traditional standing desks and they probably cost three or $4,000. And I ended up with this desk that I found on Overstock and it gets enough of that feel, the legs have enough interesting design that it's not your traditional standing desk. Um, you're definitely paying for the style. So this was about $1,000. It doesn't have memory features or memory buttons. It's just up or down, so pretty basic. But you know that's the trade-off when you want something that has 
a nice heavy wood desk feel that comes with a drawer that was a plus so I can hide things away without things getting too messy and then of course the ability to move up and down so the other drawback to this desk is it's thick and so my traditional clamp for my monitor would not fit around the width of this desk and I thought about cutting through the metal to allow the clamp on the back of this monitor arm to fit through and just doing Google searches I found someone who used something like this for a, a shelf to be able to clamp an arm to and so I went to Target to see what they had in their office area and uh, the ones that they had were kind of flimsy in terms of desk shelves or a monitor stand and uh, when you, especially when you have two monitors and a microphone and a whole setup it can be pretty heavy so just a couple aisles away we found this dessert tray in the kitchen area and it has a marble top so it's pretty heavy it is enough to give a solid foundation and base to these these monitors um, if I push these it'll still tip because it's not attached to the desk so that's the one drawback but at least it helps elevate and I don't have to cut through the desk in order to get that clamp on the arm. But here you can see the whole setup lifted up and you know, it still has a nice modern vintage feel to it uh, without just the standard straight legs and feet that you would see on normal stand-up desks. So that's pretty much the tour of the office. I'm gonna update the chair with something else. And you may have noticed it's a little bit echoey in this room. And so probably the next thing I will add is some sound absorbing foam panels to the walls just to help offset some of that echo. And we'll, we'll get those set up on this side and the opposite side. So hope you enjoyed the tour, I'm trying to do something a little bit different for a, a home office, have, you, have it feel completely unique from the rest of the home. So keep an eye out for an update video when we get foam panels up and I'll give you a tour of the tech setup in the room, but thanks for watching.